to speak, right? OK, so that's why we brought our cheerleaders along. <clears throat> so um, you may have known us as Ugam erstwhile. Ugam is now a Merkel company. Merkel is a part of Tensu, and we are into solutions that help customer experience transformations worldwide. So we help our customers transform their data, strategy, technology, analytics, as well as their final customer experiences to engage better in a relevant manner. Before we start, let's take a look at a very short video to, that sets the context of what we're going to talk about right now. How many of us have had this experience? So interesting stats for the ones who did not raise their hands and the ones who raised their hands. So apparently, all of this is based on cookies. You know cookies? <coughs> that box that comes, accept, right? So interesting statistics, it says, in the age group of 18 to 29 years, the probabilities of accepting cookies is higher, which gives you these kind of experiences. And in the age group of 65 plus, the probability of rejecting cookies is higher, who do not get these kind of experiences. But now that we have out of the way, we all know which group we belong to. But the underlying fact that brings us to this is that <clears throat> all of us see some ads or see some kind of uh, targeted advertising, as we call it, the minute we go on any social media site. Right? For me, I personally love buying jewelry online. So every time I go on Facebook, I go on Instagram, I will see some or the other jewelry that pops up, and I end up buying it. Not my fault. I still stand by that. It is them who know exactly what to sell me because they know my interests. Vis-a-vis -vis Geeta, she's in the middle of moving into her new home, uh, which she's built so lovingly, and she's been buying a lot of home improvement stuff. So she sees those products, right? Now, how do these brands know what I'm interested in? So how does Bling Wine or Shop Melt know that I am a buyer of jewelry online? That is, they know me because of my browsing behavior, and that's because of cookies, which are basically of two types. That is the first party cookie or custom cookies, which 
Shop Melt may put on their websites whenever I go, and that like knows and tracks my behavior. Or a third party cookie, which is dropped by websites which have no connection to what you are trying to do. So they may be the third party providers who just tie up with these websites and drop cookies and track your browsing behavior, which then is sold or given to other brands who are interested in reaching audiences who buy jewelry online. That's how third party cookies actually work. What's going to happen? <clears throat> Many of us would have heard of the cookies going away. Yes, no? Yes. So what goes away are the third party cookies that go away. So the cookie deprecation that was supposed to happen in 2022 has been pushed forward to 2024, primarily because many of the brands are not ready to give away all the solutions that, have been, that they have built using third party cookies. Now, if the third party cookies go away, okay, what happens to this? Like, I love, sorry, but I love my non-vegetarian food. Like, you give me four times a day, I will eat it, right? And uh, it's, not, it's highly possible that the brands will know that I am a non-vegetarian, and then I'll get all of those lovely options of meat delicious, licious, uh, whatever, fresh to home or whatever. Now, if the cookies go away, it is highly possible that Geeta, who is a staunch vegetarian, sees those meat ads, that too on the day that I'm fasting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, probably she's never going to recommend all of that again. So what is going to happen is this is a 240 billion worth industry today, which is going to get affected in some shape or form with the deprecation of the cookie. That's not a small thing. And not only that they will not be able to track you, all of these organizations or large uh, brands are using machine learning models, et cetera, in some shape or form to cater to their customers. And that's all going to go away. And that's something that they've built over years. So there is a lot of buzz in the industry as to, OK, what is going to be the solution once this goes away? Because this is going away for sure. Apple has done it. Firefox, Safari have already deprecated this way back. It's only Chrome that has been allowing it. And the reason the impact is so high is because Chrome claims two-third of viewership of this tech. And that's why the, now everyone feels the pressure. So with these challenges, obviously, there are a lot of first movers. There are a lot of solutions that are being introduced in the industry today that are being tried, tested, pulled back. So. Uh, some of them is this, the big shift in strategy from third party data to using your first party data. Second one is something called as universal IDs. So a lot of brand and ad tech companies will come together and form something like a universal ID that they can track behaviors with uh, across devices, et cetera, and then they can use that to help brands target better cohorts and contextual targeting. So Google, uh, if, if you try to go and search or research on cohorts and contextual, one of the first or largest players there will be Google, who's working on something called as topics, where they will be, where brands will be able to go to Google and buy uh, or monetize for some amount of money by audience cohorts of certain behavior. Cohorts like group of people of certain behavior or preferences, and you can then target to them. And lastly, data clean rooms, which uh, give aggregated data. So again, companies will come together, give some aggregated data, which uh, someone else can use for their purposes. <clears throat> so all good here, but the challenges, a lot of these are new and untested solutions. So they are all just coming up now. Uh, imagine a global organization basing all of their strategy on something that's just being de developed. Secondly, it's very easy to say theoretically, let's move to a first party data strategy. However, for that you need that amount of scale of data. You need to have your first party data. What is first party data? Data that you have collected about your customers, 
from your websites, and you've not, like, not some anonymous somebody has provided to you. So if you've not done that in the past, all of a sudden today you're not going to have that data as volume, right? Then most of the solutions, if you see, they focus on a problem. So even if it's contextual targeting, if it's universal ID, they're, they're pieces of the problem that get solved. But you are not getting a solution that ties it up end to end completely to reach your customers in a relevant and personalized manner. And that is where a lot of these new solutions also come with challenges. Apart from this, today we have a new age customer who's always connected, who's on all multiple social channels. And because of that, there's a lot of dynamics that come in. There's a lot of volume. So to, I, to know one person, you will have to know all their digital behaviors to be able to understand them. You need to be able to identify somebody at a granular level. And for that, you need to be able to bring in a lot of additional information, demographics, behavior, preferences, psychographics. And a lot of this has to be probabilistic because your deterministic, third-party driven models are gone. What happens? You will only be able to predict because PII information, you cannot say anything about anybody for sure. Privacy is out there. And hence, all you can do is use a lot of good amount of data, accurate data to predict the right person. And yes, a lot of this happens real time. And for that, one, only an enterprise solution will not suffice. It has to be an AI-enabled enterprise solution to bring in all of these variants inside. And Geeta here will help us understand what an AI-enabled enterprise solution will look like. Right. Now that we have uh, understood what is the size of the problem and uh, why we need an AI-enabled enterprise identity solution, now let's see what is the kind of the solution that we need to build, right? For any of those uh, enterprise solution, what you require, the foundation is the the host of data that you receive from multiple data sources. And in this case that we are talking about an AI-enabled um, enterprise identity solution, we receive hundreds of uh, sources, data from hundreds of sources, and there are thousands of attributes from each of the sources that we are receiving this data. So be it is a first party data, second party data, or a third party data. So that is the kind of the volume that we are talking about. Right? And at a varied frequency and a varied formats, right? all kinds of challenges that you have. And uh, we need to kind of machine learning methods applied even at this stage for you to get this data enriched and enhanced. Once you have your data enriched and enhanced, then we can work on the identity resolution. What would that mean is you want to create an unified profile based on all the data that you have received into your platform. Be it is an uh, offline ID resolution that is required, which is a terrestrial data, or it could be a digital ID. And there are a lot of techniques that we need to adopt for us to arrive at that unified profile. Once you have the unified profile, then it is easier for you to build certain applications that gives the best of the customer experiences right from audience creation to activation to journey orchestration, each of these steps requires a lot of um, algorithms and uh, ML techniques that we apply for us to provide the right solution to the right customers. As I mentioned, at each of these layers, when we are having these techniques, A becomes the backbone of this whole solution, right? Whether it is uh, probabilistic data modeling, or it is pattern mining, segmentation, or when you're going to build a recommender system, A becomes a backbone, and that has to be ingrained in all the layers of the solution that you are building, right? It is no more uh, uh, cream on the cake, right? It has to be at every layer that we are building the solution. <clears throat> One such um, enterprise ID solution is Merkle's Mercury. So this is a platform which uses the first party data and uh, we have moved away from the uh, third party cookies and the system can provide the best identity graphs uh, when the third party cookies go away as well. You remember the three layers that I spoke about? 
So the 95% of the US household data is there in that data layer that we are talking about. So from the various uh, 80 plus sources that we receive at a varied frequency and like, you know, petabytes of data that we collect, and we are able to resolve them and create a unified ID for about 242 million unique adults in US. That is the identity resolution layer that we are talking about. So when we are talking about the audience creation, right, the power of the system is in we are able to provide a 90% match rate. So that is the actual power of the system when you are building an enterprise solution with AI enabled at every layer, right? So we in turn help our uh, marketers to have 40% lift in the media efficiency and so on. Now going back to each of these layers, so I just wanted to touch upon that when, when I repeatedly say that, there has to be a lot of techniques that we need to apply at every stage. Just want to give a glimpse on what are the techniques or what kind of techniques that you need to apply at each layer, all right? So um, let us look at the data layer how we can enrich the data by using some of those classification methods, right? Um, here again, like there are varied methods, there are different of methods that are available. There are certain methods that I just want to mention here so that you are able to appreciate why we need at each of these layers. When you are having a lot of attributes in your input data, Sometimes not all of them are usable, or certain key attributes are missing, right? For you to even identify how you can enrich your data with the additional attributes that are missing in the data source, you need to identify right attributes, which is the, the feature engineering itself, your models can help, right? One of the classification techniques like XGBoost that we have used uh, for identifying the variables that could be the good predictors of attributes from the input data source. That means like, you know, in your existing set of attributes, how you will pick the data that can help you to create new variables or the new attributes, right? This is just to give you an use case to appreciate why or the what situation you need that kind of an um, feature engineering techniques. For a, Entertainment company, they wanted to move away from uh, event-based to an audience-based marketing. So the event-based is a natural method uh, for them when they go for marketing, right? When they wanted to go for an audience space, when they want to target their marketing to the audience, the key features like age and gender were missing, right? That is missing in their OTT viewership data. So how we can predict the age and gender and impute that attributes so that we can use it for further marketing. Okay, so this is a real life scenario wherein you need certain key attributes that needs to be added to your data and it has to be enriched for you to move on further in the journey. When we move on to the next layer into the identity resolution, this is a, I just want you to look at this kind of a data that you are having here, right? Um, when we are talking about this person, Lara Smith, right? The data that you are getting from the first party and the third party, in one place you are getting a data as L Smith, another place is Lara Smith and Lara S Smith. And the addresses are different and the email IDs are different, right? So if, if it is going to be more or less the same kind of a data that we are getting, then it can a rule-based system will suffice. Or even if it is somewhere closer, some fuzzy logic, you can apply to get the data unified, right? When you are having this kind of uh, dispersed data and from varied system, which is having different attributes or it is incomplete in certain scenarios. So this is where we will apply certain techniques like, you know, we will use nearest neighbor algorithms for us to arrive at a unified profile. So in, in one of the uh, implementations, what we have done is um, there is a, a retailer who wanted to improve the conversion, okay, and they want to reduce the cart abandonment rate. So what we, what we have done is we have kind of created a unified profile across all the channels that they are interacting with the retailer. Okay, so this is the kind of the technique that we have used when we have to create a unified profile. When we are uh, 
talking about audience creation, right? So here, uh, the, some of the techniques that we have used is creating the knowledge graph. This is an use case where the CDP is being used. When we look at CDP, it actually provides the 360-degree view of a customer. So that is, that is most of the case. That is where like, now we are seeing the CDP comes into play. When we kind of use an identity solution along with that, it complements CDP. And uh, what it can help is to create micro segments. And uh, that can be used for the tailored campaigns. So the example or the use case that we have solved here is for a car rental company, right? So in car rental company, most of the visitors are uh, anonymous users. So how you can help them to have a better experience at real time? So that is where the identity graphs or the knowledge graphs that is complementing with the CDP helps us to address that problem. And coming to the uh, recommender systems, there are uh, certain use cases that we have done. So here, the it's again for an entertainment industry, wherein like there is a, a list of cinemas that needs to be released for the next month, right? So how do you go about recommending the right one for the right audience so that the engagement is better? When we are talking about this particular scenario, what we have done is uh, we have the data, which is actually the transaction data, or wherein, like this is like a book my show kind of an example that you can relate to. All of you use book my show, right? So the information that is available to them is the kind of the movies that you watch. The attributes could be the language or the genre, the cost. So those kind of the attributes that they have, and then there is a very limited information about an individual is, avoided, is available, right? So we have kind of created an interaction matrix where there is a understanding between, like now we are able to identify the relation between the person and then the kind of the movies that they are watching. So when there is a new movie information that comes in, how we can match this, right? And uh, we are able to recommend the right kind, the right order in which the targeted uh, marketing can go to them. The content will be in the order in which that we will recommend it for them. So now that like we have seen certain examples in each of these uh, layers for our enterprise solution, if an enterprise decides to take this path, right, that they would want to move into a personalized solution in a cookie-less world, it, it doesn't happen overnight, right? So what will be the ideal path that they will be taking? So they will kind of get into a path wherein they will uh, start using some of these new solutions and using the second party data partnership, wherein they are able to engage better with their customer. And once they have their own uh, first party data also being built, and that is like strengthened along with the second party data that has been available, they are able to move to the next level of maturity. And probably that will take uh, an 8 to 20 months kind of a time frame that we are looking at. And uh, how you can, the ultimate thing is like once there is a third party cookies go away, you want to be in a stage wherein you have zero dependency on the third party data. So that is the transformation stage that you can get into wherein you are able to build this kind of an AI enabled system at an enterprise level. So once you have the system, it helps you to have a deeper customer understanding for you to transform the experience that you're providing. So if you, if you remember the video that you had seen in the beginning, uh, we only know that the, the lady is a high net worth individual and she's in the age bracket of 45 to 50, right? So that is the, that's the information that is available. Now you have a lot more information available like the purchase behaviors, right? Or what is our motivation and what is the lifestyle? So once you have all this information available at your disposal, you are better positioned to transform the experience that you're offering to your customer. Thank you.